Frankie Fish Eggs, aka Mr. Salmon Roe, is here. There are many names for caviar, from fish eggs to roe. Some of you guys might have gone to a sushi restaurant and seen ikura, masago, or tabiko on the menu. But caviar is technically supposed to be from wild beluga sturgeon in the Caspian Sea. Now caviar is used as a general term for any salted fish eggs. What they do is they take the egg sac out of the fish, they separate the eggs from the membrane, they lightly salt them, and then they either put it in jars or cans, uh, freeze it, refrigerate it, whatever. Caviar might just be the healthiest food on the planet. Just like liver, it contains all of the vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids our bodies need in their most bioavailable form, the animal form. The nutrients in certain plant foods require conversion in the body, whereas the nutrients from animal foods are directly absorbed. The main discrepancy between liver and fish eggs is that liver has a substantially higher vitamin A retinol content, and fish eggs have much higher omega-3 fatty acids, EPA, and DHA. The DHA in fish eggs is actually in the phospholipid form, which is said to pass through the brain much easier and be absorbed better, but that's never actually been proven in a study. I found out about fish eggs in Weston Price's book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. It's a book about a dentist who explore native people that were still living off of the land, their natural diets. These people actually used fish eggs as fertility and nutrition for pregnant women, nursing women, uh, children during developmental stages for its incredibly high nutrient content. If indigenous groups did not have access to fish eggs, they would always have another high nutrient food, uh, maybe some type of shellfish, fatty insect, or organ meat. In Alaska, when food is plentiful and bears have fattened up, they actually kill the salmon and only eat the brain and the eggs of the salmon. That's because those are the two highest nutrient foods on the animal. If you think about it, a fish egg is basically a tiny fish, so it encapsulates the entire nutrition of the animal. It's like eating nose to tail, except you don't have to eat you know, the whole animal piece by piece. Regardless of what fish the eggs are from, the nutrient profile is similar, per calorie that is. Salmon eggs, for instance, are higher in fat. They have a higher fat percentage. So the nutrients might be more concentrated, but calorie for calorie, all fish eggs are equal. Whether it's cod roe, herring roe, sturgeon roe, all fish roe is a super nutrient dense food. It's just the fat to protein ratio varies depending on the species of fish. And we can also assume it matters if the fish is farm raised or wild caught. That will directly affect the nutrients and the omega profile of the fish eggs. You have to be pretty careful with making sure that the fish eggs, the caviar you're buying is not from farmed low quality fish, that the fish is on some type of natural diet. So the omega six to omega three ratio is correct. If we take a look at 100 grams of salmon roe, which is 200 calories, the vitamin profile is literally complete. We have a decent amount of vitamin A, all of the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, and there is definitely vitamin K in salmon roe because vitamin K is contained in all high quality animal foods. The test is expensive to conduct, so sometimes they don't test for it. The vitamin C might actually be misleading because Sometimes they add ascorbic acid as a preservative to fish eggs. Now, fish eggs do contain vitamin C, but usually when you salt a food, it loses its vitamin C content. The antiscorbutic properties of the food are lost. So I have to do some nutrient testing in the future on salmon roe to get more correct data. Maybe we'll do that later this year. The vitamin D and E content are incredibly high for an animal food. These nutrients are usually specific to higher cholesterol animal foods, such as eggs, brains, and of course, fish eggs. Fish eggs are also complete from both a mineral and element perspective, as they contain every single one of them in reasonable amounts. It's worth noting they have a significant iodine content as well. So if you're consuming fish eggs on a daily basis, you probably don't need to supplement iodine. 
Fish eggs even have conjugated linoleic acid, which has been shown to have various health benefits. They contain arachidonic acid as well, a fatty acid specific to animal foods and just like DHA, our brains require a certain amount of arachidonic acid every day. Of course, fish eggs are incredibly high in EPA and DHA omega-3 fatty acids. They are unparalleled, uh, possibly with the exception of animal brains. Of course, I wouldn't be Mr. Salmon Row if I didn't have some for you guys to taste today. Here we have some red caviar, and the beauty of this food is a testament to its nutrient profile. Up close, we see the very pretty red pearls, almost as pretty as me. And when we bring up fish eggs, we have to bring up the conversation of food palatability. How a food tastes in its raw, natural state. And in the case of fish eggs, yeah, they added a little bit of salt to them, but there really isn't a tastier food in nature that hasn't been changed. And if we're going to look at foods in nature and ones that taste the best without cooking them, seasoning them, uh, fermenting them, they are all animal foods. When you ferment an animal food, you can increase the palatability in a natural way, but a lot of the modern things we do, from salting to processing to very specific cooking methods, you know, unless you're just throwing a piece of meat over a fire, you can argue that it's not too natural. Uh, this food palatability is important because usually how a food tastes in its natural state is an indicator of its nutrient properties. If you were to take bone marrow, for instance, that had been fermenting in the femur bone of an animal for a couple of weeks because the coyotes couldn't break into it, then it would taste like cheese. And the reason these foods taste good is because every single nutrient in the food reflects in the taste of it. If a food has certain vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids in the food, you can literally taste them in the food. You can taste copper, you can taste iodine, you could taste every single vitamin that's contained in the food. And when you have all the vitamins in balanced amounts, like we do in fish row, it makes sense that the food tastes amazing. And not only does it taste amazing in its unaltered state, it also satiates you very quickly. If you have a few tablespoons of fish row, you're going to be full. I would love to see someone try to eat like a pound of salmon row at once. You would get a couple bites in and feel full because it's so nutrient dense, it's literally satiating your appetite. Although there is little variance in the nutrient profile, calorie for calorie, the taste of fish eggs varies greatly. That's why some fish eggs are super expensive, like sturgeon caviar and salmon roe isn't really too expensive. The fish eggs will literally taste like the fish they are coming from, so salmon roe is going to taste like salmon. When tasting fish eggs or caviar, I believe you're supposed to use a plastic or non-metal spoon because it alters the taste. Uh, I've never really noticed this, but uh, let's give some of the row a try. There's so much going on here. You have that cholesterol richness that's specific to foods like eggs and brains. You have a slight iodine flavor. You have, you know, that complex salmon flavor. It's like tasting the ocean in the form of a scrambled egg. That's how I would describe the flavor. The texture is like a soft pearl that pops in your mouth and then that rich cholesterol -y liquid comes out. This is like the best food you could feed to a baby or a child. Not only would they love it, it's like super colorful and approachable. The salmon roe is tasty. I would give it about an eight out of 10 from a flavor perspective, but there's a reason sturgeon roe is so much more expensive. Here I have some hackleback roe. It's a type of sturgeon. Uh, the pearls are black. This is what you think of when you, you know, when you see caviar, like the black fish eggs. Yeah, there's a reason. There's a reason caviar is made from sturgeon. The flavor is completely different. It's buttery, it's more complex. It doesn't have as much of an iodine flavor. Of course, you're not supposed to eat caviar with a spoon like this, but I mean, if you're on a carnivore or keto diet, this is uh, ensuring you're not getting anything negative. 
Now, if you've never tried sturgeon roe, it can be on the expensive side, but on Frankie's free range meat, our goal is to make everything affordable. So we are taking a profit loss and providing it to everyone so they can experience it. This is something that maybe I would have once or twice a month on a special occasion. It's not prohibitively expensive, but it's expensive enough that you couldn't really eat it every day, whereas you could eat the salmon roe every day. So if you guys haven't tried sturgeon roe specifically, I encourage you just for the experience. I'm honestly one of those people who don't really care about the experience with certain things, but when I ate sturgeon roe for the first time, I was like, you know, it, it truly is amazing. So if you guys would like to check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com, we are offering salmon roe in that portion, as well as the sturgeon roe in the same portion. This is half a kilo of salmon roe, we're going to be offering it in four containers because having one big container like this is a little ridiculous. And the sturgeon row is going to come like this. It is in a one ounce container. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any more questions about fish row, fish, eggs, caviar, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. If you guys could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, you can check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel and, of course, uh, place an order with Frankie's Free Range Meat. If you guys would like to know more about our mission and the future of Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, you can check out the website frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Looking to do a bunch of really exciting stuff uh, from providing you guys with raw dairy to custom cuts of meat. Again, thank you guys for joining me today and enjoy the rest of the weekend.